Watch AutoLine After Hours live at AutoLine.tv every Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. That's 12 p.m. Pacific. You can subscribe to this podcast for free by searching for AutoLine in iTunes, Stitcher, or YouTube. Auto Line After Hours is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion, and by Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. Well, hello everybody. Gary and I find ourselves in a very different part of the world for this show. Newburgh, Oregon, where we're gonna be seeing the all new 2018 Toyota Camry. All new because it's designed from scratch. I think what what are they telling us? Only the badges are the same, yeah. if anything like yeah, when, that. Yeah, when some people say all new, they mean sort of new. This clean sheet from the bottom up. It's an important car. Toyota has sold 18 million of them since it ever first came In out. In its history, yeah. They sell 800,000 all around the world. Globally. So we're going to take a deep dive into this vehicle because it is so important, not just to Toyota, but to the industry. And to help us tell the story, we have... Jack Hollis, who is the Group Vice President and General Manager of Toyota USA. We also have Ian Carbadiato, who is the lead exterior designer on this car. And we've got Masato Katsumata, who is the chief engineer on the car. And we're going to get going with that right after this. We're sitting down right now with Jack Hollis, the Group Vice President of the Toyota Motor Division of Toyota. Oh, how does that work? Toyota North America? No, what is it? Yeah, no, that, that, it, it, you know, let's move into Texas. It's all, uh, so it's, uh, let's see, Group Vice President, General Manager of the Toyota Division at Toyota Motor North America. Okay, wow. <laughs> I'm glad you said it. Jack, we're here talking all about the brand new Camry yep. in a market that's just going more and more into crossovers, pickups, and CUVs, but this is still a critically important car for you guys. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the Camry, obviously the midsize segment is still a huge segment in the industry. And what I think is kind of interesting is people keep saying, well, why, <laughs> why are you guys bringing out the new Camry now? Well, first of all, this is our perfect planning time. But it was everyone's attention on SUVs, which is important because every, you know, they're selling so well, and we are with RAV4 you, and Highlander. Few, yeah. I mean, it's great. But no one's been really bringing anything new out to the sedan market. And I'm excited to launch the best-selling sedan in the market, with an all brand new model right now, when I really think there's a lot of people who would like an option, but they're not really having a lot of great options on the sedan side. So here we go. So, you know, you've really changed this car. Yeah. I mean, just from the way it looks, even in the way it drives, why are you putting that kind of effort into it? What's great is people come to what they expect about Camry. You know, you, you have your quality, your durability, reliability, safety, they get that all the time. And they've come to, rely on it to to believe in it but it's time to also change it all up to add more of what they've been saying they would like to have in it um, and, and I think we've really listened closely both to our dealers and our and our customers who are giving us the insights like thank you for all of that what else could you give me could you give me more styling check can you give us some more technology absolutely check and even could you give us some options and that's why you even see uh, the, you know like two different grills you know, in, in two different choices, because everybody has an idea around their Camry that would maximize their, their excitement, and we're trying to deliver that. That's what our goal is. So, how are you going to bring that message to the market? I mean, what's, what's your strategy in, in launching this vehicle? Yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting, because when you talk about a mid-size segment, when people say, well, who are you targeting? We're targeting everybody. I always talk about, I'm, I'm interested in, in finding buyers from 16 to 96. And that's really what we're doing. So what we're bringing out to the marketplace, we'll use, it'll be our largest marketing campaign we've ever created. It'll be almost double of what we have currently in the marketplace on Camry. And we're bringing it there to talk really about the sensation you feel of driving the new Camry. And each of those sensations can be anything from, it can be captivating, it can be striking, it can be uh, even strutting your stuff. But there's different sensations that you feel about this car, both from the exterior styling to the interior developments, to the driving dynamics. So we'll bring, bring it out, uh, full, full campaigns across every medium possible, and maybe even a couple surprises along the way. <laughs> so having 
almost double the budget to yeah. market the car. Yeah. It's got to be just great for a marketing guy like yourself. Yeah. But is that what it's going to take to preserve the kind of sales volume that you get with a passenger car versus the market going to all these crossovers? You know, it's a good question. We won't really be able to answer until we've already, you know, been out and it's been selling the car for a year. So I will tell you what I believe is going to happen. What I believe is going to happen is having a product like this being kind of the first really big name in the sedan market launching again. We're going to be at the leading edge of people being interested. We're going to draw up a lot of attention. You're going to see other players in the marketplace coming back in. You'll see an Accord, a Sonata, an Altima, and there you will see a lot more interest back in the sedan. It's, no, it's, it's very, very much similar to almost like it was when you think about Tacoma and the small trucks. A lot of the players got out. Tacoma stayed consistent. We come out of a new Tacoma, it's interesting how everyone's bringing back small pickup trucks again. Why? I'm not saying it's because of Toyota, but I am saying when a person leads, and Toyota we believe is a leader in the, in the mid-size segment for sure, we're going to see people following a lot more interest, and I think you're going to see this entire sedan market pick up, and uh, we'll see though of a year from now. Well, so, that, that's interesting that you say that, because Tacoma sales have actually gone up. The yeah. more competition you've gotten, the better you guys have done. And that's why I believe the same thing will happen here. Do I think that we're going to go for the market of a two-thirds, one-third you know, SUV to car and reverse it or flatten it? No, not at all. But I do think what you'll see is a greater interest, and you'll see that, that flooring around 37, it may start to tilt back up in the other direction. And as other players come in, I think we'll see the market grow back in on that sedan side. Because let me, let's be honest, I mean, people want choice. They want to be able to do something different than their neighbor. We've got to provide that, and I, and I think we are here. So you guys have been the number one selling car in the United States for the last 15 years. Yeah. Okay. So it seems to me that there'd be a natural inclination to say, you know what, let's not rock the boat. Yeah. I, I think that, I mean, we, and, and we heard the chief engineer describe previous <laughs> generations as being white bread and yeah. furniture and, and so on. <laughs> okay, so clearly you guys are taking a, a risk, perhaps a calculated risk, but yeah. a risk nevertheless. Yeah. What's, what's behind that thinking? I guess there's two ways to look at it. Let me, let me, let me look at, let me give you both. One is you take something like a, think about the industry, take an F-150. They sell a ton of Ford F-150 trucks. What they decide to do? They completely decide to change, the, you know, put aluminum on it. Is that going to be the best thing long term or not? I don't know. I can't tell you. But did it hurt them in the short run? How about mid run? They were leaders in that. Same thing with kind of, if you look at it from a Camry. We've been leading for so long, it would be easy to not make as big a change. But being a leader means we're going to take the best of what the former Camry has been. I mean, seven generations of being almost 20 years in a row of that number one sales take the best of it, but start from the, from the ground up and start all the way over. I think we have a pretty good recipe on what it looks like, but then we can add the things that we think are leadership, whether it's technology-based, uh, even the wheels and the different ways we're producing the different wheels and design. So I, I actually believe there's, there's a history there, but also the other part of it is, the, the second part of the story is, I, I think what, what you're seeing from the company, from Toyota, from Mr. Toyota uh, as, as, a, as the leader of our company is, if you really want to continue to be a leader for not just one or two years, but for five and 10 and 50 years, you have to take, and they're not calculated risks, they're confident risks. They're risks that say, we know what to do on these cars. We know what to do on our trucks. Let's take a lead and be the leader of that for the marketplace. And that's what we're going to continue to attempt to do. Not everyone will, will win, and that's fine. As long as we, when we don't win, we, we fail fast and keep putting that right back into winning in other products. Jack. Clearly the company likes what you're doing because you've been made group vice president. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious, how's your job changed? What's different than what you were doing before? You know, it is great. I, I am blessed. I have a great company and I love the company. I love Toyota, I love the leadership. Uh, formerly I was running marketing and I love the marketing angle, mostly because I love to be the advocate for the brand that we stand for. Now I have a chance to not only have marketing underneath me, but the uh, sales and and uh, which is critical here. I mean, the sales volume that we have has got to continue to, to, to be my number one focus because I want those sales so that we can continue to take that money and invest in products for the future. And it's not just about products though, it's about how we're making society better and mobility. So I get a chance to be a part of that and parts and service and market representation and fun, fun and fun. So my job was a lot broader to run the, the really the operations for Toyota. And because uh, I think the audience would be interested in this, you're involved with the Olympics too, with Toyota's involvement in the Olympics. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. You know, back uh, almost two years ago now, we made a commitment. Uh, Mr. Toyota himself, again, taking a, a confident risk, was decided to become a top sponsor uh, with the International Olympic Committee and it made an eight-year commitment. So we're 
committed to being the mobility partner um, for eight years through 2024. Um, and, and it's really about how do we take the best of our company, combine it with the best of the Olympics, create, create a great partnership, and really with the ultimate goal of how do we make people's live, lives better? How do we also make it just exciting and fun? I mean, sport brings the world together. And so often today we hear about things that are going on that are tearing people apart. How about bringing things together like sports and in this case, mobility. And we think it's, um, I'm actually really fired up about it. I, I can't wait to be a part of it in, in uh, both from a marketing standpoint, but, but a relationship standpoint, really globally. This, this is more active than just having Toyota signs all over the place. Oh, this is, well, 2020, uh, the Olympics will be in Tokyo. And the fact that with Toyota being there, we will be active in everything from the transportation of, of of athletes to us as guests showing up to showing off products and displays. Uh, matter of fact, the signage is probably the last of our even concerns. It really is because that's, that's not going to benefit people's lives. What's going to benefit people's lives is when we can put them in vehicles, single people movers, helping those with disabilities be able to transport themselves on their own without need of assistance. Those are things that are much higher calling that um, actually I it's the additive to how proud I am to work for this company. And keep going because you guys aren't just doing the regular Olympics, you're involved with the Paralympics as well. Yeah, you know, most people get in and they, they become top sponsors and they some people are only top sponsors of the Olympics. We're also a top sponsor with the Paralympics. So we're in a relationship with the IOC, International Olympic Committee, and IPC, International Paralympic Committee. And quite honestly, we're looking at them as equals. We're looking at them as how do we benefit both? And you know, even down to the materials that are being used by athletes you know, on the Paralympics uh, from prosthetics and um, wheelchairs and, um, oh gosh, it goes on and on. So we're trying to build a relationship with both at the same time. But again, I need to, re I need to emphasize, it's not for the benefit of Toyota, it's for the benefit of society of how can we bring people together. Because matter of fact, one of the initiatives that we're starting right now with our dealers here in the U.S. is starting what we call the starting line. Starting with athletes who are the hopefuls. How do we partner with them to give them more opportunities than they would have by themselves. That's, that's what I get enjoyment and I love sports, you guys know that. You're so a star of the Stanford baseball team. No, never <laughs> yeah, a star, just a, just a participant. Uh -huh. <laughs> but honestly, you know what it is? Is to me, sports is passion. Sports is about how you put your whole heart into something and you work hard as a team. It's no different than automotive industry. Toyota, we are one team who puts our heart into it and we want you all, um, every single guest to be a part of that team. And when we can do that, we can win. And again, it goes back to kind of societal. We got doing things where we come together to make people better. I'll be a part of that any day. That's so cool. Jack Hollis, thanks so much for your time. Very interesting. Thank you. Great having you on the show here. And thanks for my, your time. It's my pleasure to be with you guys. Thank Great you. place too, huh? Yeah, it yeah. is. Not too shabby. Thank you guys. Okay. We'll be back in a moment. Right now, we're going to give a shout out to our friends at Lear. Lear Connexus offers a parental controls application with geofencing that sends notifications regarding driving behavior and location, including curfew alerts, acceleration alerts, and speed alerts, all delivered to a smartphone application that includes vehicle location, driver notifications, and a report card of driving history, including notifications when predefined geographic boundaries are crossed. For more information, visit Lear.com. We're back, and right now we're talking with Ian Cartabiano. He is the lead exterior designer on the new Camry. And Ian, I got to ask you, what did you set out to achieve when you wanted to design this car? Well, when we started, you know, even thinking about redesigning this all-new Camry, we, I really wanted to change what Camry is and what it, you know, what it can be. It's already a great car. It's a great midsize sedan. Um, does everything really well. I want to make this car beautiful, sexy, stunning something that you really want to buy because you just look at it and you think that thing's hot. And actually we had a really great opportunity to totally change what Camry is because we have this all new platform, TNGA, and we started with really good bones of the car. So we we're able to lower the roof, lower the shoulder line, get the hood low, get the wheels out, really focus on amazing stance. So every view you look at this new Camry, it hugs the road, it grabs the road, looks like it's ready to go. You're going to tear up some beautiful mountain roads up here in Oregon. Um, I just really love the energy and the beauty of this car. 
One thing I think, you know, talking about that TNGA, you can clearly see it in the front end. We were able to push the hood down and get the wheels out. So by doing that, we were able to put a lot more sculpture into the hood. It's a very three-dimensional hood, and it really shoots forward uh, in this really strong V shape. And it really creates this really cool pulled forward intake, look kind of like a wing for the front. And we're able to put the Toyota badge into the intake sweep and pull these lines back into the headlamp, these really cool all LED headlamps into one unified wing shape. And then, really cool thing, able to float this upper wing shape in this really aggressive all black center lower, looks really, really sporty. And it's grabbed by these, uh, these side intakes, kind of inspired by a racing catamaran, like an ocean going catamaran. And those side intakes grab the side, grab that front so, uh, grill, pushes everything down, conveys low center of gravity, conveys ready to go. Looks really aggressive. Um, I don't know if it's, some people say maybe it's too aggressive. I think it's just perfect. Um, well, what you've done is you've put in a lot more tension right. in the whole design, especially you were talking about these ribs on the hood. It, yeah. It's almost like somebody pulled drawstrings to, to well, form it. You know, actually this line comes from the side originally and it sweeps all the way forward. And it is true, you're like pulling these lines to this tension point. This happens to be that point. And the other cool little detail is the very tip of this wing, we put that 360 degree camera on the very front. So it's designed with purpose. So it looks cool, but it actually gives us a place to mount that camera to give you that 360 degree view from inside the car. Let's look down around the side of it too, sure. because you've put in a lot of character in this. Yeah, so really starting with that low center of gravity, the low platform, we're able to push this down, push this down, get the striking sculpture in the entire car. I like to think that every view you look at this new Camry, the surface is moving, the surface is changing, it has a flow to it. The actual inspiration for the car was a, a ballerina a dancer on the practice beam and it conveyed strength with a horizontal beam with the rhythmic mu uh, movement of that kind of athletic dancer and we really tried to put that in this car so you look at these strong lines running from front to side to rear completely through the car you can see those lines in every single view front side rear within that strength there's this beautiful flow starting from the front wheel through the fender, which actually continues to the A pillar, all the way back to the car through the C pillar, back through the rear wheel, and down through that dynamic rocker shape. That movement is controlling the surface, controlling your eye, and that surface is constantly moving through the wheels. So I wanted to make sure that the surface constantly flows through the wheels, um, again, showing that movement, that stance, that dynamic driving ability. Um, you can see the strong sculpture in the side. We, as you, you know, we're talking about, we put the mirror down low. Um, cool thing that does actually, it creates an awesome sight line for driving. We've actually reduced the forward obstruction by 45%. We have this really cool reverse thinning A pillar. It's actually the thinnest A pillar we make in our entire company. We pushed it forward so it's really fast angle. Moving the mirror down means your sight lines are great. We move down here. I talked about that, that flow, right? Coming through here. The strong character line kicks the shape in here. Now, that was a challenge <laughs> through production engineering. To make the stamping. To, to make be able the to make stamping that. to carry that through. I mean, that a lot of the shaping on this car was a challenge uh, to actually make that uh, depth of stamping, to keep the lines crisp, to keep the highlights perfect. But that, you know, that strong character it plays with light, it plays with the reflection. Again, everything's moving around the car, always keeping your interest, but also planting the car to the ground. So right, the I, I gotta planted. ask you, Ian, this, this is a Camry, okay? <laughs> yeah, Cam I know, it's Cam Camry. Camrys are not supposed to do things like that. So, so how did you get the wherewithal to do that stuff? You know, I think everybody was on board from the beginning, the chief engineer, the marketing and planning team, the design team, that we're gonna make a big change. We're gonna totally change what Camry is and, and what it means. And when everybody's on board, everybody's ready to work together. So I, I don't think this car would have existed five, 
10 years ago. I think because of two, Accio three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think because really because Akio Toyota told the whole company no more boring cars and Toyota is about fun to drive. So when you start with that ethos as a baseline, it allows us to kind of break free from where we've been. And, you know, let's face it, we got to make a big statement with this car. We need to do something new with Camry. And, and yeah, it's a, it's it's pretty bold and it's pretty dynamic, but you know, it's easy for designers to always draw whatever we want. Um, it takes a lot of work to make it. And that's where I think actually production engineering rose to the challenge and created a door section like that. And, and one, one section. thing, let me interrupt you there because you've talked about the sweep of this all, but you got this little bit of a kick up over the, the rear, oh, rear well too. The rear shoulder, I, I love that shoulder. I just, this rear three quarter view is actually my favorite view of the whole car. I think whenever I sketch this car or draw this car, I usually always draw this view first and then I'll draw the nose of the car. Um, what I really love about it is the shoulder sets up the stance. And I just, I love running my hand over the surface. I like to call it the uh, car wash surface. So when you buy this car, maybe six months from now or a year from now, you're, you're washing the car in your driveway you're running your hand over the surface, you'll discover something new. It's like, oh, that crease, that's pretty cool. And I love the way that it sweeps back and it creates this kind of opposite brush stroke imagery right here. So it's no longer a square. It's no longer the boring box. It's, a, it's kind of a piece of art in the corner. Again, the shoulder sweeping all the way back, you know, tucking the cabin in. So when we move this in and we bring the shoulder back, we're able to kick the flares out kick the tires out. I mean, the rear view of this car, there, it's really, I think, changes what, I hope what you would think of Camry, because all of a sudden, this looks like a high-end sports sedan, um, really premium, really athletic. That rear flare is huge, that shoulder is huge. And the lines that we talked about on the side, they actually continue all the way through the car into the tail lamp and terminate at the rear where, you know, it's pretty expressive. Okay, now there's a couple of things since we're at the rear. You've changed the logo, Camry. Right. Yeah. Standalone letters. Before, they used to be all connected, and I'm guessing that's from a manufacturing standpoint. It's one piece. It's easy, but now way. you've got five separate letters. Tell us a little bit about your thinking and doing it this way. Well, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of cool challenge points on the rear of this car. The, ba the badge, the logo being one, I mean... Actually, that, that previous Camry logo was used for the previous three generations, and we really wanted to make a difference. And it was one of those things where wouldn't it be cool if the Camry logo was five separate letters and we can create a new font, kind of a, a mid-century modern thin and wide font. And you think before you would think, nah, it's not going to happen. Well, we actually made it. And this takes work because it is five individual letters. Um, the same thing about the, the rear exit intakes connected to the lamp on XSE models. Um, this right here. Yeah, that words, yeah. visually it connects the tail lamp to the rear corner of the car. From the rear view, it makes the stance look really awesome because it's pointing to the ground. Um, again, another element that we didn't have to do, but we thought it added to the overall image and kind of holistic view of the car. Um, then probably what you also noticed is the the quad exhaust. Yeah, quad <laughs> exhaust and, and a diffuser there too. Yeah, so, you know, we did the, uh, we actually designed the XLE and LE version first and that, the sports level of that car jumped up a lot. So when we started doing XSC and SC, we had to amp up, you know, a little bit more and we wanted to go more, um, even more bold. Um, so we knew we had a sports sedan. We wanted, we were able to change the whole rear bumper, which is new for us. Um, we said, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we had quad exhaust? You know, we have this really great new V6 with direct injection. We've got 301 horsepower. Um, can we communicate that a little bit more? We have this dual exhaust unit. What if we did two of them? Again, I think in the old days they would have said, no, we're not doing that. But here we are. We have the quad exhaust. And because we switched from dual single to dual quad, we actually had to change the center portion. So we're able to design a much more athletic and expressive uh, center rear diffuser that does actually control airflow out the rear of the car. Even the new, the wing is all new as well. It's actually a much more low profile, um, kind of slim fit uh, wing. We had to change the manufacturing process to attach it to the car. 
Um, little details like that is really why I love this car. Um, I love the blackout roof option. I know um, the fact that you can get a two-tone Camry is, is another big shock to what this car is. And I, I just love the amount of expressiveness we can get from that. I think it's really cool that actually the only thing shared from with the previous Camry on this car is literally the Toyota badges. So they're on the trunk and then the one on the front. The one on the front and the one on the rear. So, so to, to go back to the front, I mean, I know we're at the back, but so you had to design a completely different front end right. for the other trim levels. Talk right. about that. So again, we started with LE, XLE, and, but we knew from the beginning that we need to make a bigger statement between the different model ranges within Camry. And so what I thought about was, what's that read from 200 yards away? The 200 yards away is, is really kind of the uh, rough distance between you driving a car past our dealer lot and you looking onto the dealer lot. So I wanted to make sure when you saw the noses of these two cars, they're completely different imagery. Not, not the same car with different grills, but physically, um, three-dimensionally different front end. So the base XLE, um, again, the same identity of, a, of an upper wing, a lamps and upper grill together in one slot, putting the SIP Toyota badge in that slot, wing framing the whole thing, and then the catamaran icon grabbing that wide and low center grill, planting the car to the ground. We finished that front, said, damn, this thing's pretty damn sporty. So we gotta go more for XSC. And that, that kind of freedom um, allowed us to be more expressive and stronger with the identity. Um, I really love both models. I'm kind of torn about which one I love more. <laughs> so. Hey, I know you're the exterior designer. Let's take a peek sure. right inside real quick, and then we gotta talk about this NASCAR race car that we got parked next to this. So talk a little bit about this instrument panel especially because it's, it's very unique. Well, the really cool thing about the interior design also that the original theme came from our Calthy studio in Newport Beach. And um, it really focused on what we called rhythmic layers. And it was uh, really beautiful and expressive layering a surface controlled by these flow lines moving forward. So you have these two strong lines moving from forward and then cradling the speedometer and the steering wheel, really showing the driver that they're, fo they're the focus. Performance is the focus, the driver is the focus. On the other side, the other flowing line, the rhythmic layer line comes from the passenger side, comes across, kicks down and connects to that line. That connection is where we're able to put the really big, uh, the touch screen. And it becomes a really beautiful landing point for all our technology, another focal point. I think the trim and the fit and finish on this interior is really just step, step, step above where we were or where our comp competitors are. There's really beautiful trim in this car. Everything is soft touch. There's beautiful ambient lighting at, at night. Um, the th one thing I really love is actually the door handle. So the, the door handle on this car I think is just an example of the beautiful work of art there. It really looks like a standalone sculpture and the way it's tied in with the trim is to me kind of expressive of what Camry has become and what we're able to do to it and how we were able to change it. Real good, let's talk about this NASCAR sure. racer because you played a major role in the way that this thing looks for a long time now, yeah. NASCAR, Cars have been differentiated by the different decal graphic on the grill, but you've got some real character in this. Well, you know, I mean, we made a badass production Camry, <laughs> to be honest. So the main goal was to make the most badass NASCAR on the track. And I mentioned that for differentiating XSC and LE Camry, that we wanted it to be really clear at 200 yards. It's the same thing for the NASCAR. It's really that face identity. We want you to know that this is the new Camry coming down that track towards the finish line. That strong identity. And so, you know, NASCAR changed the rules a couple years ago and the spirit of the rule change was to make the cars more like the production car. Like my favorite era of NASCAR is 70s and 80s where they still looked like the real cars. 
So taking the spirit of that rule change, we wanted to make the new NASCAR Camry as close to production as possible. The most production style NASCAR car on the track. So um, actually we were able to change all the, all the body surfacing that we were allowed to change. We were able to do something completely new. So except for the cabin, which is shared with the NASCAR rules in the rear corner, it's actually entirely new surface. And we actually started with the production hood data on this car. So we actually took the production data from that Camry and used that as a starting point for this car. And we were always comparing the two cars back and forth, you know, doing direct front comparisons. And what I really love is you can see the character lines from the production car on this car. You know, these offsets, I mean, it's really amazing that on a 200 mile an hour race car, we were able to get this much sculpture in this car and it's the same sculpture that's on the on the production car yet you know we worked a long time on this Calti and TRD working together there's a lot of aero testing constant aero testing um, you know slip sli uh, slipstream downforce high speed stability changing surfaces like a tenth of a millimeter back and forth and redoing the front end this this much offset no offset, deep intake, no intake, you know, back and forth. In the end, everybody worked together to make sure that this car looks like that car. Even the body side has the same characters, the rear flare, the front flare, even the window graphic has the same imagery. Um, the tail lamps have the same shape. I'm really excited about the NASCAR car, so I think it's really cool. So. You know, for, we're looking at the hood here. You were saying that's where it all started. Yeah. Look at the hood there. Now, because of the graphics that go on to NASCAR <laughs> cars, you, you can't see that very well. So I got to ask, <laughs> I mean, how obsessive were you guys in developing what you could have ostensibly just had a flat hood, right? Yeah. We, we knew that there were, I mean, that's, you know, that's part of the racing. We knew that there were always going to be graphics. But internally, doing the, when we were doing the data and the sketching, we always did silver, just plain silver to check the surfacing back and forth. And I think even though there's graphics over it, you can still see the shape. And I think as designers, we know it exists. You know, I, I want it to be the same car just for my own personal uh, reward, I guess. Um, but it's there. And uh, I think actually the most important part really um, from a branding point of view is that front end down the track graphic. And as long as we can paint like the production car, you know, as long as we can paint it and we can highlight that strong face identity of the new 2018 Camry, I think we're good. And, and I've noticed actually that when we first launched the car, the teams were putting a lot of graphics all over the front. And as the season has, you know, um, seasons kind of progressed, I've been seeing and kind of studying the new paint jobs and I've been noticing that they're showing that front graphic a little bit more clearly and kind of letting the car, the shape, do the talking. And, you know, really cool things like that strong rocker that you were talking about on the production car, that deep door sculpting. I never thought any of that would ever make it to this car. I thought for sure they would want to delete all that. But turns out that that um, rocker sculpture in the bottom of the door actually helps with uh, high speed stability and performance. So it actually was a plus. So the teams were excited about that. Now that's really cool, you know, that you can do that. It looks cool and actually works great. Well, real good. Ian Cartabiano, thanks so much for giving us so much detail on the design of the production car and how you translated that into racing. Sure. Fascinating presentation. Thank you. It's my pleasure. I can talk about this car for hours, so. <laughs> I'll bet you could, and I'll bet we could listen to it all. <laughs> but we're going to take a break. We'll be right back in a moment. We're back, and now we get to go for a drive in the car. And we're not just going for a ride here. We've got Masato Katsumada, the chief engineer on the car, who's go actually going to be the chauffeur for Gary and I. And it's great to have you driving us. Okay, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. <laughs> well, let's get in the car and yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll talk why, why, about why, it as why, we drive along. Why, why not? Why not? Okay. Mm. There's one thing that I find very interesting is mm -hmm. you've got 
double wishbone rear suspension. Yes. And look, I'm an enthusiast. I love seeing that sort of thing in a car. Mm -hmm. But this is a middle market family car. Why mm -hmm. did you decide to go with a double wishbone rear suspension? And you, you can easily feel the difference from the current gen or other typical medium sedan vehicles. So th now the center of gravity is on far lower than the typical medium sedan and also the components is in the centerized so that makes an, uh, this is the simple physics so then the maneuver and, and also the steering feeling and the moving of the vehicle is in the quite in line with your wish so then the rear suspension have to be follow the front like this kind of movement immediately in order to realize that, we definitely need the double wish one and an independent suspension system. So that is the reason why we decided to introduce this and a bit expensive uh, rear double wish one suspension system in order to realize that this amazing exclusive dynamic performance. So this vehicle is meant to be more enthusiastically driven than previous generation Camrys. Is that true? Yeah, of course. Why not? <laughs> well, some would say because it's a Camry and that's not its character. But you had the opportunity, as John said, so it's, it's the new architecture that Toyota has developed. But in this case, mm -hmm. it's a full suite of architectures in terms of the the underlying structure, the mm -hmm. powertrain. Yeah. Um, tell us about that. Yeah. So then, uh, just talking about and from the scratch design, 100% brand new component part design, it's not so easy and it's not feasible because you know, the, each company has their own limit of the resources or even budget, right? So then if you can eliminate most of the vehicle development, so then you can just focus on the Camry, but it's not the case. So therefore, we need a TNGA philosophy. So TNG philosophy is not just on parts commonization, but more and more clever optimization to create the budget of the resources or a real budget to make a hundred percent from the scratch design. This is almost a magic. It's got to be magic for a chief engineer. Yeah. Most do not get that opportunity in their career. Mm-hmm. So I have another question about mm -hmm. the structure of the mm -hmm. car. Yeah. In the presentation that mm -hmm. we were given, there was no mention whatsoever of structural adhesives. Mm -hmm. Do you does Toyota use structural adhesives? Did you use them in this car? Yes. Is Definitely this the first yes. uh, first application in in Toyota? I don't think so. But the more and more wider usage and uh, this might be one of the first runner in a Toyota vehicles, yeah. Yeah, but then anyway, you, know, you can easily feel the stiffness, especially the twist stiffness of the structure. And uh, this is a directly contribute the steering feeling, direct and a secure feeling of the vehicle. So I got to ask, the body of this vehicle mm -hmm. is so much more expressive than we've seen in past generations of Camry. Mm -hmm. Was that a challenge when the design team presented you with the drawing of what they wanted to achieve? Yes, and uh, every starting designer, I believe, and I would like to make this kind of sleek and a wide and low profile styling design, but it is not so easy. No one can do, do that. So therefore, the structure point of view, like safety or structural stiffness uh, that, that is a challenge for a body designer but in the packaging of this beautiful body it's not so challenge for them because the most of the component parts designed from the scratch and are relocated at the best position so this is a full tng benefit so then you can lower the hood and you can lower the ip then it, 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 it's easy to make an, uh, this beautiful package. That is the way. That is space engineering. And uh, you can keep the sedan packaging, but lower seating, 
lower food, lower IP. This makes this kind of beautiful styling. Masato, I've got a question about yeah. the, the hybrid. Mm -hmm. Are there different hybrids or is it just one hybrid system? I, and, and what I'm asking is, I, kn I know mm -hmm. you have at least one version now with a lithium ion battery. I, yeah. Is there a version with a nickel metal hydride too? Or yes, is it just yes. one version? Oh, so you have more there, than there one two, version. two versions. Uh -huh. And I'm sure, what, you, you did that because of cost? Mm -hmm. Because the nickel metal hydride, I, I presume, mm -hmm. is cheaper. Yes, you're right. So then uh, still, and, uh, nickel met metal hy hydride versus uh, lithium ion has uh, pros and cons. So then uh, we, we have to carefully select uh, which is the best for each grade or what kind of purpose. So then we believe an uh, XSC or SC customers, uh, they relatively don't worry about the fuel economy. So then, if so, why not to utilize the so cheaper and uh, affordable price, affordable cost on the nickel metal hydride battery for them to create the budget more sexy or more decorative or more technology oriented specifications. And this is budget allocation. When we're talking about the non-hybrid, you have two engines for this, a four cylinder and six cylinder engine. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about these? Yeah. So, and uh, still, the U.S. customers loves V6, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So then, and uh, the, our model mix of the engine lineup as an L4 dominate in most of the Camry, even the current gen. But still, V6 lover is in in, in the U.S. And uh, some areas in the world, like in the uh, Gulf countries or Australia, still they love V6 and a torque full power. So then we decided to keep V6 engine in the lineup of brand new Camry. Well, you can make more money, right? Because don't you charge like $2,000 <laughs> for the V6? Yeah, could be. <laughs> could be, I'll, I'll bet I got that one right. Yeah. Hey, uh, last question here. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I find fascinating going back to the styling mm -hmm. is that you've got that two-tone look. The, yes. the blacked out roof, yeah. that's, a, that's yeah. an option. Yes. That must have been a real struggle for your manufacturing people. How did engineering and manufacturing work together to be able to pull that off? Yeah, of course, and, uh, there's some difficulties among them. And, uh, but uh, each function, and the team members, and are so motivated to realize this beautiful two-tone models, yeah? So then, this is the biggest motivator to work together and uh, overcome these uh, production difficulties. And uh, they invent some kind of jigs and a painting something method, and uh, then they finally realized. And I, 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 I was so impressed that that kind of beautiful styling car makes everything possible. Very good. Well, Masato yeah. Katsumata, thanks so much for being our chauffeur and giving uh -huh. us a lesson about what this car, uh -huh. what it took to do this car from an engineering standpoint. We're going to have to take a break right now. In fact, uh -huh. we're going to give a shout out to our friends yeah, at Bridgestone yeah. because mm -hmm. this car happens to be riding on yeah. Bridgestone tires. Well, we're back and right now we're not going to talk to any more Toyota people. We're going to talk to a couple of our our colleagues here who have been out driving the car. We've got Tyra Weingarten from VroomGirls.com and Nina Russen from Carspondent.com. And great to have the both of you guys here with me and Gary. Thank, Thank you. you for having us. So what'd you think? Well, I think that it's been a very interesting transition for Toyota. I mean, here um, they have an iconic vehicle, a vehicle that has was for a long time their bestseller. Um, and they're faced with an interesting challenge at a time when SUV sales are up and passenger car sales are down. Um, they obviously need to make this a very strong introduction. It's a very important car for them, so how do they do that? Uh, and they've made some significant changes. I mean, the styling is much more motive than it has been in previous uh, generations. Uh, a brand new engine. Uh, a hybrid with significant technology advancements. Um, and I think they're also paying a lot more attention to women uh, as being a key market for this car. I mean, if you look 
at the exterior styling, the interior styling, the touch points, and in fact the advertising campaign, a lot of it is clearly geared towards women. Tara, what's your thoughts? That's really well said. I think I can go now. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for coming. See I mean, you later. That was, yeah, see ya. That was very well said. I agree with everything that you said. I, I was really impressed with this car. I believe this is the Camry they should have made last time, the last iteration of it. I was hoping that was it, it was going to be like this, but you know what? Better late than never. They made it to the party for the money. I think this is a really competitive vehicle. I don't think there's a lot of cars out there. There certainly aren't new midsize sedans in this price range that are so loaded with incredible safety features, comfort, fuel efficiency that's top of the heap, and um, power. I thought it was fun to drive. I really enjoyed it. Okay, so so. You know, you mentioned that you know crossovers and SUVs are are selling like crazy. Mm -hmm. um, why do you guys think that? I mean, Toyota has been year after year after year bestseller with this car. I'm sure that they could not change a lug nut and they'd be the bestseller for several more years. Why they do it? Well, people change. The audience is changing. I mean, we all know that um, young people don't um, have a lot of them don't have the same enthusiasm for cars that we did. So that's a challenge because these are future car buyers. Um, and they are more interested in IT. Connected uh, features have to be enhanced. But more than that, it has to be an appealing package. I mean, yes, this car is very competitively priced. And uh, one thing that people have always been able to count on and they're able to continue to count on it is the rock solid engineering. I mean, everything that they've done with this car, the new four-cylinder engine is a beautiful piece of machinery. The six-cylinder engine is even better. The eight-speed automatic transmission is rock solid. Uh, doesn't hunt, great, you know, power band with that. The new double wishbone suspension and the improved torsional rigidity has made a huge difference, not only in ride and handling, but also in steering response. But from the standpoint of the consumer, who's not an engineer, what they're looking at is they're looking at styling, they're looking at touch points, they're looking at infotainment, they're looking at how they can use their smartphone in the car because people have long commutes and they want to do something during those commutes besides sit and stare out the window. And this car offers people that. It's something that they, it, it does have a presence on the road, which previous Camrys really haven't. And inside the car, people can do what they want to do in a car these days. Uh, they want to be able to text. They want to be able to use apps. They want to be able to have different music options. And that, at any price point, is a very important selling feature of a car. Tara, what do you Again. think? Again. Well said. And, <laughs> and, and you can leave now. I can go okay, now. But, but again, I mean, okay, so, I mean, I don't know what the number is, but I mean, they, they spent hundreds of millions of dollars developing this, right? Yeah. A billion. A billion, okay. It's gotta be. It's so easy, so, a billion. Okay, do you, do you think yeah. it was, it was what, money, money well spent? spent? I do, <laughs> I do. And I, I, I look at every car that I evaluate, not at the price that it is, but is it of value? So if a car is 250,000, is it worth 250,000? Is the Camry a V6 at $35,000 worth, $35,000 worth it? Absolutely. I can't think of another car and at that price that I would enjoy driving more. But here's the thing, and we talked, and you talked about the um, SUVs, of course, being 63% of the market now is light trucks and SUVs and crossovers. I'm one of those people that still likes a car. We have three cars in our driveway. I'm still not an SUV driver. We're, we're still around. People who like cars are still around and you still need, and there's a lot of them. I mean, as they said to us last night, this is the, the midsize sedan is the second most popular, popular category in America. That's a lot of people it represents. So, so they're still selling to a, a wide audience. And, and so, because it's a wide appeal car, they have now given us many flavors, the hybrid, the, all the different trim levels, the different, two different engines, gas engines, there's, there is a Camry, honestly, for everybody, and I didn't used to believe that was true. I used to think there was one flavor of Camry. And, and what now flavor was that? I, it was kind of reliable, dependable, not exciting, but it will start every morning, it'll get you there, it'll be safe. 
but I never really enjoyed it. I just thought this is a, this is a very solid, good choice. But now I actually think you could buy this car and actually really enjoy driving it. And I can't believe I, I'm saying that. So, so what do you think the competitors are gonna do? Are they gonna say, ah, good for you, Toyota, just glad you did that and we're gonna make more SUVs and crossovers? Or do you think that they're gonna respond in kind with you know, a new Accord or a new Altima or a new Fusion or a, something to the Malibu? I mean, I think that's a really good question. I don't, I, I think Accord needs to step it up um, I think everybody needs to step it up. This is now a benchmark. This is the, now the gold standard. Do I think they will? I'm not sure. They're spending so much attention on these crossovers and SUVs. I'm not sure they're really even paying attention to this category anymore. And it'll and maybe they're going to look and see what happens with the sales numbers for Toyota before they actually make a move. What do you think, Nina? However, if you look at Europe, sedans are still big business. I mean, maybe part of that is the fact that gasoline in Europe is more expensive. Um, and you and can't park anywhere. Well, you can't park anywhere, but there's also always been a focus on performance and design. And those are things that sedans both can deliver very well. Um, and in some ways, they can deliver it in ways that SUVs cannot. Um, just the nature of the beast. So with that being a benchmark, um, I think that this is going to maybe heighten an interest in sedans in this country, sedans built for North America. And yes, I mean, people look at Kia, look at Hyundai, look at the investment they're both making in luxury sedans and in um, affordably priced sedans. They obviously see the value in it. But their sales numbers are way down. But they, I mean, way down. all of this is cyclical. No, not with Kia and Hyundai. Their sales numbers have, at a time when others were rising, theirs were, were, they need to step it up in that area. Well, they do, but I think my, my point is, I think they will. Yeah. That's because sedans are important. People buy sedans. Empty nesters who don't need the SUV anymore, maybe they're sick of owning an SUV. Yeah. So they're gonna go back to a sedan because it's nice and it gets a little bit better gas mileage. And in this case, it's pretty, and they know uh, in that particular segment, they're gonna buy a car, they're gonna keep it for 11 years, and they know that for 11 years, this car's gonna run fine. They're not gonna have big problems with it. And that's always been a selling point for Camry. Camry, absolutely, the number one thing when I think of Camry is I think of dependable, reliable, dependable, safe. Yep. I, that's a, that's a, that's we, a we good thing. Were you think stylish now? Yeah, yes, absolutely. So okay. it's, it's additive. We've yeah. been talking all about the strong points of this car, and it is a very strong car, but Tara, if you had to sit Toyota down and say, hey guys, here's one, two, three things that you ought to be looking at, would you tell them anything I specifically? Did. I what? got out of the okay. car, and the first thing I said to them was, I really liked it. I can tell you all the things I liked about it, or you could hear about the two things I don't like about it. Let's hear it, hear? yeah. So there were two things. The first thing I noticed was when I closed the door, it sounds tinny. Gary said the same thing. I don't like it. I want a whomp. I want the car to sound whomp when I close. I want a substantial, I don't want to hear tin of any kind. And I went and opened up and closed several of the different cars out there. So it wasn't just mine. I went and did it to three or four cars and, well, four cars. And it sounded the same. So you had the same issue. Okay. Yeah. The, the second thing is I don't like that piano black um, console, that, that vast wasteland of shiny black plastic is kind of cheap looking to me. I didn't, I thought they could have done better there. Hmm. I didn't, I didn't mind Body. that, but I agree with the door thing. Okay. Nina, any pointers that you'd say, here's where yeah, you can step it up? Yeah, there's a couple of things. Um, and this is always a challenge, uh, but where I live in Arizona, people have sunglasses on all day because the sun is extremely bright. The uh, gauge cluster is not particularly easy to read with polarized glasses on. Uh, and that's something that's always a challenge. I also noticed that the Scout GPS did not acquire a signal on one of our drive routes. And we're in a rural area, but lots of people are in rural areas. So I needed to um, actually to resort to my phone. Um, we did the same thing. To get an app. Yeah. But, um, but the Scout GPS works through your phone, so. Somehow it wasn't working it went, for yeah. us either. Yeah. yeah. yeah and then we went. It didn't work for me either. Oh, because so, we took so those, the, but we those took in rural areas could get the embedded GPS. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, that's. <laughs> That's something. And the only other thing that I would say is that with the battery issue, and I know this was a cost thing, um, that they're still hanging on to the nickel metal hydride. 
at a time when pretty much everyone has gone um, lithium ion. Well, the well they do have a lithium ion version. They do, but it's only in the uh, LE. Yeah, the more um, expensive one. Actually, that's the least expensive one. Yeah, it's the base, the base oh. model. The LE has the lithium ion. Right. Yes. Oh, I missed yes. yeah, because the, ar the argument being that those who are buying the upper trim levels are not as interested in, interested in, in MPGs mm -hmm. as those who are more frugal. Oh, yeah. yeah. Interesting. But I, I think, you know, assuming that technology is available, that they should make the investment across the board and go with lithium ion because it's lighter, it's more compact, and that in the car world And you is, get better fuel economy with it. Too. Yes, yes. So those would be I did my love only. that hybrid. I thought that was a really, I was getting 51 miles a gallon. Mm -hmm. That's insane in a big car like this. Yeah. Yeah. In, a, in a car that's not dedicated as that's a right. hybrid only. So, so I, was I was really impressed, impressed. by that. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things, and John and I were talking about this, was, was the fact that it, it seems to me that historically the Camry hybrid has been a nearly invisible car. Mm -hmm. I mean, who knows that it exists, right? Yeah, yeah. So, and yet it's omnipresent. It, it's, it's seemingly omnipresent, but yeah. I mean, we all know what a Prius is, and, and, and you know, we, we, all, we all get that. But so, Given gas prices, do you think that just even having the hybrid at all is just, eh, whether you have it or not, doesn't really matter? So I, I like it. I, you know, why not, for, for $24,000, again, like a Prius price point, why not have the added, I don't want to go to the, t the gas station that often. If I can go fewer times to the gas station every month, why not? And secondly, I like money. If I get, you know, if somebody's going to give me free money, which ostensibly that's what it is, if I could save 10 bucks, 20 bucks, that's, that's okay. That's, you know what that is? That's a nice lunch out. Well, and I think it's also with our group of people who have active lifestyles who want to leave a greener planet, there's an interest in having options for doing that. And this is an option. And yet the Prius is a great car. Um, but some people don't want that. Some people want a more traditional sedan, and here you have a more traditional sedan. You don't have the problem with the reduced trunk space that you had in the previous generation. You've got really good performance. I mean, the suspension changes have made a quantum difference in ride and handling on that because of the rear suspension, um, which is where the battery pack is located. And the front rear weight balance is excellent on that car. It's really, it's like a hybrid with no compromise, which is pretty cool, especially considering the price point. It's exactly and right. there's certainly an audience for that. It's a no compromise hybrid. Yeah. I felt that way too. Yeah. Hey, look, I gotta thank the both of you for stopping by to share your thoughts and insights on the new Camry. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Jared and Nina, great having you guys on the show. Thanks. Thank Good. You. And with so that, much. we're gonna have to wrap up the whole show. So, Gary, it's terrific out here, but it I think is. next time we're gonna do this is back in the studio. I think we are. Yeah. <laughs> So we want to thank all of you for having tuned in. Hope you enjoyed this very deep dive into the new Toyota Camry. Auto Line After Hours is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. And by Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. Visit our website, autoline.tv, where you can watch us live Thursday afternoons. Get your daily fix with AutoLine Daily and in-depth analysis and interviews with AutoLine This Week. There's all that and much more at AutoLine.tv.